we get a lot of calls from customers that are having problems with their transmission shifting. Um, and basically the reason for that is a lot of times with the RH, if you have problems going into lockup or overdrive, or if it's hunting in and out of overdrive or in and out of lockup, that's basically 99% of the time gonna be a TPS problem. Often guys will buy a new TPS and then six months later they're in the same boat. Well, the reason for that is because their worn bushings destroyed that new TPS that they just spent, you know, a couple hundred bucks on or, or whatever they cost. Um, so basically what we recommend is that if you're gonna replace your TPS, put a set of these bushings in too because then you know that you're gonna get the most longevity out of that investment. So that's the case for a 47RH because the one through three is hydraulically controlled in the transmission and overdrive and lockup are electronically controlled via the PCM. On your 47RE trucks, it's still a hydraulic, it's still a hydraulic shifting in the, in the transmission, but it's electronically modulated by the PCM. So if you have a bad TPS on a 47RE truck, which is going to be your 96 through uh, 02 or 03, um, basically it screws up your, your shift timing entirely. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll want to hunt, it'll downshift at the wrong time. It just causes all kinds of problems with shift timing and, and that sort of thing. So, um, basically if you're gonna, if, if you have a bad TPS and you want to replace it, put a set of these bushings in too, because the old TPS very likely failed as a result of worn bushings in the throttle shaft. Now that you understand why this is so important, let's show you how to make it happen. We're gonna demonstrate this on good times because it's the easiest to film this area. It's gonna look a little different on your street truck, obviously, but it's, it's the best chance we have to, to give you a good demonstration uh, with the video. So basically, this is what you're gonna be working on right here. Um, this here is a TPS. Again, this truck doesn't use one, but I put one on there so you can see what we're talking about. Um, so basically, there's some bushings on the inside of this shaft that this assembly rides on. And if I manipulate this here, you can see if I run it this way, you can see that there's some play in there. Um, and if I push it up and down, you can see that there's some, some play in there as well. And the reason this is a problem is because um, this is a sensor. And more specifically, it's a potentiometer. So there is actually contacts in here that that physically touch each other so this thing is not a bearing it's just a sensor it's not designed to deal with any any side load or or axial load on this shaft so what happens is when you hit the throttle it it puts a thrust load on it um, and then engine vibrations and stuff will let this move up and down all over the place so this here is a is a throttle linkage plate that i pulled off of a core pump we had here this is useful for showing you just how much wear there can be in here. Um, I mean, I'm getting a full 16th of an inch of play there at the end of the shaft in both directions, which is um, not good. So now I'm going to cover what we got to do to what we got to do to get this replaced. So there's two seven millimeter bolts and you'll take the TPS or throttle position sensor off all the way. And again, you remember how much less play there was on this one. Well, that's because the TPS is there. So if we take the TPS out, you'll see that that throttle position sensor was actually providing quite a bit of location and stabilization for this system, which is not good because that means it's going to wear prematurely. And these things are not cheap. All right. So I've got the TPS here and I've got the outer TPS bracket. So we'll just leave those like that. And then the two bolts right here. So now if you look down in here, you can see that this one's got quite a bit of play in it too. About as bad as the other one. And that TPS was supporting the end of this shaft entirely, which is bad. Um, so basically there's a clip up here and on a, on a street truck, you will very likely need to loosen this bracket. This bracket is located differently on this pump because it's got different tapped holes in it. So you'll need to, there's three, three bolts that attach this bracket to your injection pump. Um, 
does it go? It goes like that. Maybe it's just two, but here and here underneath that. So we'll take this clip off and you just, I can get this one with my fingers, but you might need to stick a screwdriver underneath it to get it up and off of there. We'll set the clip there. There's a washer underneath that. So we'll pull the washer off. Now this will slide all the way out. And now you can see this, if I get my hand out of the way, you can see this crusty looking plastic excuse for a bushing there. And there's another one in the top of this bracket here, which I'll use the shaft to kind of scoot it out. There's the comparison. You've got wimpy, 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 hefty, hefty, hefty. What you want to do is make sure that these are going to slide on there freely. And if you'll notice, this doesn't just drop on there like it should. The reason for that is because there's often paint or irregular wear on these shafts because of these plastic excuses for bushing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this off. And the, re the way you can do that is you got this ball joint here on your other throttle linkage. Um, you can just kind of twist. You can get in there and see that. Just kind of twist it like that and it'll pop out. These ball joints are also a wear item. So if you have excess play in here, this is a good time to replace it because you've already got it halfway apart. So if you zoom in on this, you can see that this black oxide coating that came from the factory is worn off, but it's not regular. And this is indicative of that varying thrust load that I was talking about. Unfortunately, the nature of 25 year old trucks is sometimes you have worn parts and obviously you know, we can't design something that fits every worn uh, 12 valve bell crank the same way. So what you're gonna have to do is make sure that these things slide freely on here. And if it's, if it's a little sticky above this clip groove, that's okay because that doesn't really matter. But basically down here on the shaft, you wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth. So this one drops right on there. This one is gonna go this direction and it drops right on as well. On my personal truck, I didn't have to do anything. They just dropped right on and they fit perfect. On this one, obviously, um, what, what happened was the end of this shaft was a little bit mushroomed. So what I did to fix that was I just laid a file here very carefully and just took light passes and went around the whole thing very carefully until this just slid on. And it is still a little bit tight right up here at the end of the shaft, but that doesn't really matter if it's above the clip groove because that's not where the bearing surface is. So now that we've verified the fitment is correct, we're going to lightly lubricate this assembly. And basically, um, this is what I've got just lying around in the shop. Um, generally, we use this for putting, tr uh, putting transmissions together, generally. Um, Basically what you want to use here is just any kind of a, of a thick sticky grease that's not going to run out. You don't want to lubricate it with like PB Blaster or WD-40. You don't want a liquid that's going to run out. But just about any kind of grease, whether it's your, um, you know, your black molly chassis grease or if you have engine assembly lube, anything will really work as long as it's not going to run out. And you just want a light coating on there that's going to let the parts move freely, but not attract dust and wear this out even further. So we'll put the, put the lower one on and we'll go ahead and lubricate both the shaft and the outside of the bushings. So we'll just drop that on like that. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll snap the throttle shaft back together here. And basically assembly is reverse of removal. So basically just put it like that and snap it back on. And then this will slide back up in here like that. And then you'll take your other bushing and drop it in from the top of the bracket. Just like that. Now, We'll take our washer right here. We'll set that back on. And you want to hold the bottom of this shaft so that it doesn't fall out, of course. And then we'll take our clip and we'll put the clip back on as well. And 
depending on how bent and tweaked this clip is, <clears throat> you may want to grow a third arm just real quick because it's no big deal. All right, so now, now that you got the clip back on there, you're basically done. There is often going to be a little bit of uh, axial play like this. That's not necessarily a problem. So now we can uh, put the outer TPS bracket back together. So basically you'll take this and set this in here like that. You wanna make sure that the holes with the metal sleeve line up with the holes in the bracket because there is a separate set of holes here that won't help you. So those, that basically just goes like that. And then we can get this in here. All right, so there's the completed installation. Now you're done. All right, well, that about wraps it up. That's, uh, that's about all there is to talk about on the TPS subject. So if you like this video, feel free, feel free to subscribe. Uh, give us a like, post a comment, and we'll see you next time.